Hello, welcome back to Piano Lessons here on Musician's Edition. I'm Evan, and today I will be covering time signatures in music. This is a part of our rhythm series of episodes while we continue to break down reading music. Time signatures play an important role that hopefully will not be too confusing here. All right, here we go. So when looking at a sheet of music, time signatures are the two numbers on the left side of the staff, right at the beginning of the song. Every song will have a time signature like this, so let's break down these two numbers that we have here. Each of them are going to tell us something different. The number on top tells us how many beats make up one bar. The number on the bottom tells us what note equals one beat. And that's probably not too helpful yet, but we're going to continue to break it down. So when I say the top number tells us how many beats make up one bar, that really just means what number we count up to before we go back to one. Do we count in twos, threes, fours, and so on? Then when we read it on the sheet, we should have all of the bars or measures or these little sections here add up to that number. So let's practice here. The absolute most common time signature in music is four, four written as a four over four. And this is also called common time and may just appear on sheet music as a C instead of four four. It means the same thing though. So here's one line of music with some notes and that time signature. Again, the number on top tells us how many beats per bar. This is a bar also called a measure. They are separated by these lines called bar lines. So within each of these bars or measures, we count up to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's the tempo we're going to maintain throughout that whole song. Always counting up to fours, then repeating that count. So before we practice clapping on beats of rhythm, now we have numbers that we can count up to and repeat. And so it's on that one that new sections will be introduced. Like you go from a verse to a chorus, chorus to a verse, or a bridge, and so on. The count just repeats up to four. That's what this number tells us. Again, within each bar or measure, in 4-4, four, four, we're going to count up to four. The notes and rests combined within that measure will always add up to four. This could be four quarter notes, two half notes, two quarter notes and a half rest, or whatever combination adds up to four there. Again, 4-4 four, four is by far the most common. The second most common time signature is 3-4. That's a three on top and a four on the bottom. So the only thing we changed here is that top number, meaning we're only gonna count up to three now. Each of these bars or measures has three beats that we count to. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. Each bar or measure will add up to three when we combine all the notes or rests included there. So this means you won't find whole notes or whole rests within three, four music because those count up to four, which is more than that three beat bar measure can now handle. So we're gonna use half notes as our longest notes. Again, any combination adding up to three. So that could be a half note and a quarter note now. This doesn't nicely work out though, because what if we wanna have a note play for a full bar? We don't really have a note for that now. A half note can't do it. It only takes two of the three beats. So something commonly used with these time signatures is dotted notes. A dotted note looks like this. It means that that note is now worth 1.5 times its regular value. So a dotted half note, a half note is regularly worth two. So we're gonna add one extra on there to make it three. So that dotted half note is worth one half note plus one quarter note, two plus one, that now gets us three, which is gonna take up that full bar or measure now. We can have dotted quarter notes as well too. That dotted quarter note is gonna be one quarter note plus one eighth note, and so on. That's how these dotted notes work, and we'll practice those a little bit later too. So in three, four, we add up to three, just like four, four, we add it up to four. That's our only change so far. Other than that, we can also go into two, four, where we just count to twos over and over. One, two, one, two, one, two. And that's how much we fill up our bars or measures for that one. So again, 
The top number in that time signature just tells us what number we count up to, how many notes and rests we can squeeze in those bars or measures. Two, three, or four, what are we gonna be counting up to? Now the bottom number in the time signature tells us what note equals one beat. For these, four means quarter, so that quarter note is gonna be one beat. That's the most common one. Eight means eighth, which is fairly common too. Two could mean a half note, or one could really mean a whole note. We don't use those too often though. Four is the most common bottom number. Eight will be sometimes there too. So when we have four over four, the bottom number is telling us that the quarter note has a value of one beat. So if we have four quarter notes, that equals a full bar or a four count. Then a half note is still double that or two beats. Eighth note is still half of a quarter or half a beat. If we switch that over to four over eight though, an eighth note is now, is now what we recognize as one beat. So we would take four eighth notes to make a full bar now, two quarter notes to make a full bar. Make sense? So here's a few examples here. First, you can see this top one just looking at two four. Two four, we can fill two of those quarter notes within each bar or measure here. You can see the one below, that's what three four would look like. We can fit three quarter notes within each bar or measure. Finally, we have four over four, our most common one where we can fit four of those quarter notes within each bar or measure. So that's just how the top number is going to change things as you read music. All right, we're gonna break down some examples here. First, we're gonna start with just four four, that most basic time signature. Let's review what those numbers are telling us in four four. That top number is telling us that each of these measures is gonna add up to four. The notes or rest combined in there are always gonna add up to four. We can have one whole note add up to four, two half notes or four quarter notes. We could have eight eighth notes or any combination of these here. And what goes for notes goes for their same rests. We could have four quarter rests, two half rests or one whole rest. And that would add up to our four count. And that bottom number again tells us what note is equaling one beat. That's telling us that that quarter note is one beat. So we do need those four quarters to make up that measure. Here's one example of a few things here. So first one's pretty easy here. You can see four, four. We're gonna start with two half notes. We're gonna hold those for one, two, three, four. Next one, we have four quarter notes. Again, pretty basic here. We're gonna play those as one, two, three, four. And this third one here, we have half note, some eighths and a quarter. So that half note's gonna count up to two. Those eighth notes will make up that three and, and then that four is where we play that quarter note. Here it is together. One, two, three, and four. In this final one, we have one of those dotted notes. So remember those dotted notes. If it's on a half note, a dotted half note goes from two beats up to three beats. It gets an additional one there. So if I have a dotted half note and a quarter note, I'm gonna hold that dotted half note for those first three beats and play that quarter note on the four, like this. One, two, three, four. All together here, here's what we have. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. And that's that 4-4 time signature. Let's go ahead and move on to a 3-4 example, an example of a 3-4 time signature. So breaking down these numbers again, we have that same bottom number, which means that quarter note is one beat. The half note is still two beats. The whole note is still four beats. Eighth note is still half. That top number changed to a three, meaning it's only gonna take three quarter notes for us to fill up a measure. We could alternatively do six eighth notes to fill up a measure. We could do a half note and a quarter note. We could do a quarter note and four eighth notes. Or remember again, we could also just put in one dotted half note and we'd have it filled up as well. So here we have an example of something that's in three, four, a quick line of music. 
So here's that first one. Uh, that first line is just doing three quarter notes. We're cutting those off as one, two, three. The second measure here, we have a half note and a quarter note. We can count that off as one, two, three. Third one, we start with a rest, and then we have two quarter notes. So we pause for that one, one, two, three. Next, we do have that dotted half note taking up those three beats. Again, we're gonna hold that one for our one, two, three count. And this last one, we do have four eighth notes and one quarter note. So we're gonna play that as one and two and three. We can do this here together from the beginning with those quarter notes, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, and two, and three. And now we're gonna be looking at our last one, which is gonna be six, eight. That's six, eight. We just doubled those two numbers from three, four. That's all we did. We're still kind of counting in threes. We just doubled it up to six. So for this one, each measure is gonna add up to six. And we can see we have that new bottom number of eight. And that means that the eight or eighth note is gonna be one beat. So it's gonna take six eighth notes to fill up one measure. It could take three quarter notes to fill up one measure. That's how we're counting these now. Okay, so let's look at some examples for this one here. So in six eight, we can see this first one, we just have six eighth notes. That's all we're gonna use here for this first one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just like that. We could also look at three quarter notes and three quarter notes could do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could put dotted quarter notes in there too. Instead of those regular quarter notes, remember in this one in six, eight, a quarter note is worth two beats. So a dotted quarter note is now worth three beats. It picks up one extra one. Three beats now for a dotted quarter note. So they go from the value of two to the value of three, meaning we only need two of them to add up to six. Math time, I know, right? Let's do it. So these dotted quarter notes, one, two, three, four, five, six. We could have this dotted half note now here too. Just like in the three, four, the dotted half note takes up this full measure. Because remember in six, eight, a regular half note is now worth four beats. Almost fills up the six count, but when we add in this dotted note, it ends up going up to six beats because it is now worth the value of a half and a quarter. So we get six beats off that dotted half note. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next one here, we have three eighth notes and one dotted quarter. That's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Last one, I wanted to throw in a rest in there to show you that we can have dotted rests as well too. If you can tell me what kind of a rest that is, bonus points for you here, that is in fact a quarter rest, a dotted quarter rest. So a quarter note was two, a quarter rest is two in this, six, eight. A dotted quarter note went up to three, a dotted quarter rest is also gonna be three. So for the first three beats of this last measure, we're not gonna play. We're gonna play that eighth note on the four and that quarter note on the five. So here's that last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And all together here, let's play something in six, eight. From the beginning, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 
Great job, guys. We'll get some more practice in our next lesson as well, too. And that's that. We took down time signatures. You can practice rhythm now with songs that you hear. Instead of clapping along to those beats like we said before, we can try counting. You will most commonly hear those 4-4 four, four songs where we're gonna count up to four and just repeat that count. And we can think of the typical kick, hat, snare, hat groove you might hear in rock or dance songs. That kick, hat, snare, hat that's repeating throughout the song is just a one, two, three, four count that's repeating throughout the song. And you can catch that same kind of rhythm with every song you hear. Whether you're counting up to fours, sometimes you'll be counting up to threes with those three, four grooves and see if you can pick up on that. For those typical like rap, R&B, rock songs you'll hear it with, where you hear the kick, hat, hat, snare, hat, hat, kick, hat, hat, snare, hat, hat. That's counting in threes there, as opposed to the typical kick, hat, snare, hat groove that you hear counting in fours. See if you can pick out the difference. Have fun counting along to these songs. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.